The Golden Star Resources Limited acquired its Prestia concession in 1991. Effective 1st January 2006, the company established a sublease agreement for various mining infrastructure from the owner Ghana State Gold Mining Company Limited. Having established itself, the Golden Star Resources Limited, which had been operating in the Bogosu Prestia area, undertaking mainly surface mining, decided to commence its proposed Prestia South Mbiase Unsusta project mining operations in its Prestia surface concession. Providing a background to the company's operations, Mr. Neil Laughing, Managing Director of Golden Star Bogosuwasa Operations, had this to say. Golden Star Resources was an exploration company and uh, it had a lot of exploration ground inside of Ghana and the opportunity came uh, up for Golden Star to um, buy into the Bogosu operation and so we, we came into the Bogosu operation and uh, went from an exploration company to uh, an operating company as well. So it was just opportunity and uh, at that time it was very, um, it was good business to, to invest in Ghana. So we have expanded uh, over, the, over the years. Uh, now we are coming back a little bit more with our footprint. As an overall uh, business, I think that, that Golden Star has uh, fared reasonably well. As a supplement to an environmental and social impact assessment, that Ghana's Environmental Protection Agency required to permit the company to commence its proposed Prestia South Mbiase Unsuta project mining operations, the Golden Star Bogosu Prestia Limited commissioned an archaeological survey within the proposed project area. When we are preparing the EIS, then the consultant look at the cultural environment uh, the heritages of the communities and other things, those that can be preserved. For instance, the Pristia South, there's a cemetery along that, that will be alienated, it will not be removed, it will not be uh, transferred, it will be kept intact for the interests of the communities. The Pristia concession is home to a rich cultural landscape with formal and informal mining dating back to the 17th century. The archaeological survey, however, focused on Bondi Top Hill, also referred to as Bondi Main Reef. The Bondi Top Hill was the site of a settlement that Ariston Gold Mines Limited, one of the early mining companies to operate in Prestia, probably established by the early 20th century. In addition to natural vegetation, the settlement is characterized by several buildings and space which staff of mining companies that operated in and around Prestia prior to the coming of the Golden Star Bogosu Prestia Limited had used as residential, recreational and educational facilities. Today, the facilities are occupied by a few squatters of diverse geographical and cultural backgrounds. But what I hear facilities currently are also not in the good state. The bungalows are all old. And if you, you look at them, I think over 50 to 100 years old. And uh, if you look at the electrical connections, the best way is to rewire the places. But uh, we have in our surface resources also some of them there. So we mine some parts, and the resources that are not mined, we can then rehabilitate them after mining and put them into good use. In addition to an environmental impact study, the Golden Star Bogosu Prestia Limited has in accordance with Ghana's mining guidelines and the company's policies on community relations and human rights had surveyed, mapped and documented the settlement as part of its program. The archaeological survey was commissioned nonetheless, as in the view of the Ghana Museums and Monuments Board, 
Further depth was required in the arena of cultural heritage, given the length of mining history in the region and the potential for possible claims of connection to cultural heritage. The survey was therefore to generate further archaeological and ethnographic information on cultural and cultural heritage resources that the proposed mining operations may and may not impact. It was also undertaken to identify the existence of samples of cultural heritage that may warrant salvage or some form of conservation, and to identify opportunities for Golden Star Bogosu Prestia Limited to enhance, preserve, or conserve artifacts of cultural value as an integral part of establishing their own new layer of cultural heritage for future generations. Apart from traversing the entire Bondi Hill settlement to identify surface materials, a team of archaeologists from the Department of Archaeology and Heritage Studies at the University of Ghana, as well as field assistants drawn from nearby communities, undertook test excavations at four locations. The team studied the built environment, locating, mapping, and visually documenting 50 separate buildings. It also interviewed 36 male and 12 female occupiers of the Bondi Hilltop settlement who were between the ages of 18 and 73 years. Key officials of Golden Star Resource Limited, Divisional Chief of Mbiase Nsuta, the Odikro of Bondi, the Secretary of a Union of Alliance Small Scale Mining Establishments. Conversations were also held with former mines workers. Proprietors of unlicensed small scale mining establishments known as ghetto owners, opinion leaders, and concerned citizen groups. All this was preceded by an orientation officials of the Community Relations and Social Responsibility Department, as well as the Environmental Department, provided the team of archaeologists. The orientation focused on the company's engagement of the communities in its concession the various social and economic intervention programs it had undertaken in various communities as part of its social responsibility and challenges the company has been confronted with since its operations in the concession area. Test excavations were conducted at four locations. The first excavation was near a building that informants had identified as a mine workers clubhouse. The second was on a cassava farm that had a spread of iron slag on the surface. The third was near a building which according to informants had served at one point in time as a guest house. The fourth location that was excavated was within an area that had served as a golf course, according to informants. The archaeological survey was not without some environmental challenges. Each of the trenches excavated was refilled with back dirt. The artifacts recovered comprised various types of glass, such as whole bottles, as well as fragments of wine, whiskey, champagne, beer, and Geneva bottles. In addition to these were fragments of tumblers, mugs, and other drinking glasses. Also found were fragments of ceramics, light bulbs, asbestos roofing sheet, corroded metal, and shell, particularly that of Akatina Akatina. 
In its study of the built environment of Bondi Top Hill, the team of archaeologists using a handheld geographic positioning system noted the geographical coordinates of various buildings. Five main categories of buildings were observed. These include two-unit pedestal concrete wall bungalows, multiple room pedestal concrete wall bungalows with internal kitchen, two bedroom and hall concrete wall bungalows with separate kitchen, wooden wall bungalows, and non-residential concrete buildings. Many of the buildings had structural defects, such as collapsing roof, collapsed wooden floor, damaged windows and doors, and cracked walls. Some of the buildings were also overgrown by bush. While many of the buildings served as residential facilities, the non-residential structures functioned as schools, while the other structures served, according to informants, as a workers' clubhouse, a senior staff clubhouse, and a golf clubhouse. One fairly large building was also identified in the discussion as a guest house. Other features of the built environment included the remains of street light metal poles with light fixtures, electric cables exposed by erosion, washed off paved or tarred streets, and a fairly large encased transformer. The wooden bungalows located appeared to be in a relatively good condition, and a few of the other bungalows with solid concrete walls could be salvaged and conserved if warranted. However, many of the buildings and other aspects of the built environment are in a state of disrepair and risk collapsing without major financial investments of the owners. Peoples of different ethnic, language and geographical backgrounds currently inhabit the Bondi Top Hill settlement. Among them are local Wasa from nearby towns and villages, peoples of the various regions of Ghana, and many citizens of the Republic of Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, Burkina Faso, Niger, and Nigeria. While some claim to be farmers cultivating cocoa and food crops, others serve as teachers, taxi drivers, and food vendors. A few shops, as well as centers that screen videos for children, are also found. Nonetheless, the majority of the residents engage in unauthorized or unlicensed small-scale mining activities around the settlement. It is apparent, however, that the occupiers do not make adequate investment to refurbish the buildings in which they live. This may be explained by the fact that many of the people are transient. The relatively sedentary occupiers are very much aware that their residency is temporary and they will eventually be ejected by the state gold mining company. According to many of those interviewed, they are prepared to vacate the settlement anytime they are asked to do so, but may ask officials of the Golden Star Bogosu Prestia Limited for time to enable them to prepare for their departure. Some of the residents interviewed expressed themselves about their occupancy of the settlement. In fact, the buildings were actually neglected. It was not being used again. So it was left in the bush. These Ghanaians are our, these are our own brothers. They started to struggle to get the place here. If they come and settle, and that person who is staying here, less like me, as I'm here, somebody wants it. He can come and ask me that, tell I want some place to stay. But normally, I tell them I don't give these things out. So, where, if you feel you can get some place to sleep, you can carry on. So, Edano, according to me, Madame from the teacher, I'm going to 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 the teacher,
Until no said that is in room cramp no one. No baby do dog no naja. Say robber be crown or the bear cutters who are not their cutters for na one any eight. Those people occupying those facilities are scotters. They uh they don't have any right to be there. They are illegal small screen miners who are exploiting our resources without any authority. And then they have also arrogated to themselves that uh, lots of still in those facilities. The buildings don't belong to us. But if we came here to occupy the occupy the places and uh, make sure that the, the building will not collapse. Uh -huh. That is why we are all here. We are coming from Obuasi <coughs> just about eight years ago and we come and set here for uh, getting something from our uh, this and our family. Know that uh, this one is not belong to me. Whenever they destroy it, I don't I don't bother for that. You can see the compound has mounted because at first it was windy. And even if you cannot even pass this side. No way. There's only this one that you can pass through. It's God so good. When we came here, we have been able to clear some parts, but not all. So you can even pass through. And sometimes, if you're in the room, you can even find snakes inside there. But we are ready when they come right now. We have to move. For most of the two, I the but for a few, many of the occupiers of the Bondi Top Hill settlement live in very sordid and deplorable conditions. Many of the children encountered were not enrolled in school and were observed to lack strong parental presence and care most of the day as parents engaged in various livelihood activities. <laughs> Unlicensed mining operations undertaken around the periphery of Bondi Top Hill threaten the natural environment. There are vast fields that have been excavated and abandoned without any attempt to reclaim the land. Mercury and other chemicals the operators employ to extract gold from the ore, in addition to the solid waste they generate in the minefields, have polluted the land and nearby streams. <laughs> The challenges are many because uh, apart from the Galamse uh, depleting where we have rehabilitated, sometimes they encroach on the places, they dig them out. Areas that we have, uh, we have rehabilitated, they cut them down uh, for charcoal and other things. The challenges are that even when the Galamse yes, are working, they don't think about the external environment because if you look around, they only uh, wash into the external rivers without any recourse to those things. But mining companies uh, don't do that. So these are the challenges that we are having. And they don't respect the laws. They only encroach any land they get. They don't take license. They don't do anything. They put their excavators and they will be working. Information many people interviewed in the Bondi and Prestia area provided suggests that the Bondi Top Hill settlement once witnessed a vibrant community of early mines workers, including expatriates and their local counterparts. The settlement had two major golf facilities and hosted national tournaments and attracted many dignitaries across the nations. The settlement was a major attraction to local and international visitors and a medium of identity construction by the local elite. 
Uh, it was a very nice golf course. It was a very nice, nice golf course. And even when Book of Shopping Pay started, our expertise used to come and play golf there. But uh, due to non-use, no, there was no maintenance, therefore the place has overgrown. Bondai Top Hill is however known to many of the local people, including the traditional authorities and anti-mining advocacy groups interviewed, as very rich in gold ore and a potential source of wealth creation in the area. So far, there's little to suggest that mining activities of the Golden Star Bogosu Prestia Limited will cause irreparable damage to the culture cultural heritage and environment of the Bondai Top Hill and its environs. In contrast, the Prestia South Mbiasen Nsuta project provides a unique opportunity to identify, recover, and now preserve the few remaining items of cultural heritage for future generations' interest, while simultaneously creating a new, perhaps again vibrant, authorized and regulated mining culture that can be viewed in the future as history. Evidence available to our research team suggests that management of the Golden Star Bogosu Prestia Limited is conscious of the essence of cultural heritage management and is seeking to expand its capacity in this arena. And I think it's very, very important as a, as a business that we respect the past and develop for the future. And so I believe that um, if a, if a community or a people are to tell its story, then it must understand what its story is, and then as the story develops, it can continue to tell a story that as it goes along. So I think in a nutshell, it's, it, it's important we pull in the past into the business so that we all understand the past, and culturally for a, for a business such as us, which is an extractive business, which does disturb land, and it does disturb, uh, change, it does change the fabric of society because it creates a different income stream. So there is a, a great impact that, that comes from mining, not just digging a hole. So we, um, and I think as a business and as businesses, gold companies, 
or mining companies are more aware of that. Hence you see that all companies have a, a huge community and social responsibility.